So one of the things we can do now is we could, for example, use quant stats to analyze these two strategies. And uh, it's probably a good a good thing. Now, I'm not sure whether we have already installed this. No, let's do this. So we need to do a pip install quant stats. So it's just installing the package and then we need to import it. All right, so now we can do something like QS. Did we import quantstats as QS? Yeah. We can do a QS.reports. So we get a full report. And what we should put in there now is something like this. Reds. And then we also need to provide a benchmark. Mm -hmm. And the benchmark is basically, say, our spy, right? So it's reds.spy. So now, if we run this, we can actually get this amazing report here of our strategy. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that we've got all these these metrics here, so sharp of, of our strategy is 0 0.69 versus 0 0.43. You know, annual return is 7.9, so it's, it's nearly 8 against 6. The drawdown is much, much lower, 30% versus 56%. So there's many, many of these. Now, I don't want to go into too, too much detail. So the beta is relatively high, it's 0.4. Why? Because we have to spy in there as a component. So of course it will be correlated, but it's still relatively good. We've got 5% alpha. So, so the alpha are the returns that are not correlated to the market. 5% is actually quite all right. And then we've got these charts here. This is mm -hmm. the performances of the two strategies. And you can already see here, the drawdown is much, much lower. Also here, that drawdown is much reduced. If you actually look at the log returns, so this is what we're normally looking at when we're using the cumulative sum, then you can see here these these drawdowns are, are in fact very much taken out. You know, so so it's actually pretty good mm -hmm. in comparison to the underlying strategy. Anything might be interesting. So we've got some. You can see this is the drawdown periods. So this is a fairly long period of a drawdown. So that that's something that probably isn't so great with this strategy that it take it it has a long drawdown. But overall, you know, it's it's okay. It's not too mm -hmm. bad. What we could do for example now is instead of doing this for our strategy here, we could actually do it for the equally weighted strategy. And so it'll take a little time again to write the report and see now mm -hmm. the sharp ratio is, is a lot less, but having said that the annual return is actually quite a bit higher for the equally weighted strategy. The beta is of course higher as well, but also the alpha is a bit higher. So you can see the only thing is when you look at this, the drawdown is just phenomenally large, you know, and that's, that's pretty scary. I mean, here yeah. maximum drawdown minus 47 versus 56. So it's, it's still a bit smaller than, than this strategy, but it's pretty substantial to drawdown. So, you know, that's quite scary. And obviously our optimized strategy will be much superior to this. Now, you know, one of the things we could do, for example, then is, uh, you know, use different plots where we can, for example, plot the allocations of the portfolio. So we could do something like plt.bar, and then we have reds.columns, and then res, which is our results, dot x. So this gives us a bar chart and it basically shows us how much we allocate to each of these strategies. Here we've got 0 0.4 something, 
you know, the gasoline is naturally quite low and the SPY, you know, is somewhere quarter. So it's quite interesting. Now, one of the things that you can see here is it actually doesn't add up to one. There are certain things you can actually put certain constraints in that these weights can add up to one. What can you do to make them add up to one? Now, usually what you do is this is actually what you call a constraint in the optimization. So when you use minimize, there's a few extra bits you can do. One is that you could say there's something called bounds and bounds is you give it you give it upper and lower bounds for your optimization. Let's just say you want each of these weights to be at least 0 0.1. You could, for example, then put in something like 0 0.1. So this is the lower bound. And then we don't have an upper bound. We go none. Yeah. And we do this three times because we have three weights. So if you run this again, you will actually find that, sorry, this is the wrong bound. We wanted to do the minimization down here. So here bounds, and then we go bounds equals bounds. So we could maybe bounds to do that. We call that BNDS, BNDS. So what it does now in the minimization is it actually gives us, see, this is a bit different now here. Yeah. So it gives us some bounds when we run this. You see our minimum <laughs> allocation is now actually 10%. You know, before <laughs> it was under 10% it was somewhere here, but now it basically says, oh, okay, we want as a minimum 10%. And so what you can also do is you put in constraints and one of the constraints you can put in is that you want this to be, or do you want the overall weights to be one because you want to allocate hundred percent of your capital, right? So this is, this is basically optimization. And what this also is, is basically multidimensional optimization. So we've got three dimensions, which is our three weights. And we can take this to many, many more dimensions. And so when you do portfolio optimization in finance, you have often a hundred or several hundred assets. So you have to optimize in several hundred dimensions. That obviously comes with its own problems, right? But this is not, this is not dissimilar from, for example, neural networks. You have basically a similar optimization problem on a, on a larger scale. So. So, you know, when you, when you, when we do these things, we're already learning a little bit about other fields and topics as well, which is cool.